Good morning, everybody. Thank you for joining us for this webinar today. My name is Jeff Model. I'm the founder of CG Architect, and I'll be moderating today's session. Uh, before we get, begin, I just wanted to introduce our speakers today and to go over uh, the format of the webinar. So today I'm joined by Partha Ray, who's the founder and CTO for Polyport, Chloe Cattell, who is the CEO and co-founder, and Freddie Swales, who's the, who is Polyport's product evangelist. Uh, on a personal note, I think everyone's going to really enjoy today's uh, webinar. It's a technology that I think is pretty significant, could have a pretty significant impact on our industry, not only in how we manage both our intellectual property and copyrights, but also um, how we protect our digital assets. I ran into these guys last year at SIGGRAPH and was immediately impressed. Uh, those of you that know me well know that I spent a lot of time on the road checking out new companies and technology, so I'm not too easily impressed. So this is uh, so going to be pretty exciting to see where these where this goes. Uh, before I pass the mic over to Chloe, uh, I'm just going to launch a quick poll, but if any time during the webinar anybody has questions, just use the question and answer interface and uh, we'll be doing a Q&A at the end of the call. So I'm going to launch this first question. One moment here, there we go. Okay, so we're going to keep this up for about 60 seconds or so, so if you guys want to quickly answer and then we will... Uh, Pass over to Chloe as soon as you guys are done. Twenty more seconds. All right, great. Thank you very much, you guys. So, uh, Chloe, I'm passing the mic over to you. Looks like you are a presenter. Awesome. Thank you, Jeff. And uh, thank you for having us today. As Jeff had mentioned, my name is Chloe Cattell. I'm the CEO of Polyport. And here with me today is my co-founder and our CTO, Partha Ray, uh, and our product evangelist, Freddie Swales. And we're really excited to chat with you guys today about preventing theft of your most valuable intellectual property. So as you all know, digital content is what drives your business. And in order for you to operate, you have to be able to share this content with a variety of different stakeholders whether that be clients, general contractors, other architecture firms, MEP engineers, civil engineers, your content has to be uh, able to travel to a myriad of places and be accessed by multiple people. And this is content that you guys have spent hundreds of man hours creating, which is what makes it very valuable. And so at every point in the process, your content is at significant risk. So what are you supposed to do? Well, you try to be more secure by keeping your production in-house inside of a walled garden, but of course, due to the current market dynamics, that's not very feasible anymore. You transfer assets physically by handcuffing hard drives, or you require your artists and designers to log into VPNs and virtual machines, which make your IT teams and artists want to bang their heads against the wall because they're dealing with lost connections and spinning wheels of death just trying to get access to a 3D Studio Max file or a Revit model. And even if these solutions do work perfectly, they're still missing the most important part. And that is protecting the content that you're creating while it's in use. That means that when you send someone a 3D Studio Max file and they access that file and they make edits, those edits aren't protected. And so you're relegated to sending someone a file wondering what they're doing. Is the client sending this to a competitive firm? What is the subcontractor doing with my file? Have they shared it with a competitor? You have absolutely no idea. And so if Partha, you could touch also on, because we do get the question of, well, hey, how secure is my content with a cloud storage solution? I'm gonna pass the mic to you for a moment. Sure. Yeah, at the end of the day, no matter how much money you spend on security in the cloud or your infrastructure security, there's always a level of trust. Because at the end of the day, in order for somebody to work on the file, they're usually gonna pull it down to their local desktop to maximize their compute power and get the most performance out of their experience. And that means that they have possession of the file, which means that you have to trust them to not do anything wrong. Back to you, Clay. 
Oh, right over here for the on polyport yep. where we fit in. So with polyport, the difference is that file can land on that local machine on that computer where your outsourced worker is working or maybe somebody's working from home and you have full control and visibility the entire time. Even if that user is creating new data from your existing data and that data may only exist on their local machine, you can still take away people's permissions on that file that exists only on their local computer. Awesome, thank you, Partha. So really where do you wanna be? So let's go from the doom and gloom to the bright side. You wanna be able to share your content with the external stakeholders and let them do what they need to with this content while you can still maintain visibility and control over that content so that you can work in a trusted manner, you can increase the workforce that you're working with and really have that full visibility and control. And that is why we designed Polyport. Polyport is the content security platform specifically designed for the creative industry. We've been victims of theft ourselves in the creative industry and we understand how important collaboration is in order to innovate. And so we've designed a solution that doesn't hinder workflows. Polyport is file agnostic. We are application agnostic, but most importantly, we're transparent to workflows because we understand that if you add additional steps into a creative pipeline, you've already failed and security and efficiency do not pull together. And so we've made sure that we've architected a system that will enable you to work in a creative way with uh, full visibility and control and something that doesn't hinder your workflows. And so what we're gonna show you, uh, Jeff is gonna pull up the webinar recording right now. Uh, let me change the presenter to you, Jeff. Or Jeff, are you able to do that? Yeah. yeah. <laughs> okay, perfect. So uh, while he's pulling that up, so what we're gonna show you in this recording today is just one example of a workflow, and that's gonna be going from Revit to 3D Studio Max to rendering out an image and show you how you can maintain true visibility and control over that content throughout the entire process. But most importantly, I want you guys to use your imagination when you are seeing this uh, recording. And that's because Polyport is flexible. And so whatever workflow that you guys currently have, Polyport can support. So just keep that in mind and also, you know, build up any questions that you have while you're watching. So I'll turn it over to you, Jeff. So I'm just gonna launch the video now. Hey everyone, welcome to the live Polyport demo. First thing we're going to do to get started is get logged into the Polyport Studio client. Once we're logged in, we're going to click the plus button to create a new project. We'll give the project a name here. There's no sound, Jeff. And then click. Just trying to restart the video here. and then click the OK button. Hey everyone, welcome to the live Polyport demo. First thing we're gonna do to get started is get logged into the Polyport Studio client. Still no sound. Once we're logged in, we're gonna click the plus button to create a new project. We'll give the project a name here you have sound now? No, sir. And then click the OK button. Okay. I have sound, so I'm created, not sure if maybe you click on its tile. People in the audience the could project. let us know. First yeah, thing we want to do saying from that here is build out so, our team. Yeah, okay. Sorry about that. We're gonna, we'll let if it go. If we click the plus button, we'll see team members we can add. And I'm going to add myself to show you how permissions work today. Also, you can add external members if you know their email address. You just type it in, and if they're in the system, once you click the plus button, you'll see their name appear. Cool, now it's time to start adding some assets to our project. So we click the assets button, then the plus button, and navigate to a folder of an asset that we have. It's a Revit asset. And we're simply gonna drag and drop this. And then we're gonna choose our output path. This is where the protected version of the file will land. And it's the protected version of this file that we wanna circulate, which allows us to control and track it. In this case, I'm gonna put it in a folder called protected. So I'm gonna copy this path over here. And select the folder and hit okay. 
the asset has completed protection, so I'm going to hit done. And now it's time to divvy permissions to that asset. So I'm going to click on it, give myself creator permissions to it, and then hit OK. And then we're going to go ahead and try to launch this file in Revit. I'm switching to the activity log so you can see the telemetry that's going on in the background. Once my asset loads in Revit, we're going to do some simple work and then export an FBX file. So I'm just going to delete one of these trees to keep it easy. And then I'm going to go to the file menu and export to FBX. We're going to load this FBX into 3D CEO Max after this and show you that the whole pipeline remains protected. So I'm just choosing my output folder here. Where, where I actually save it doesn't matter, but I'm doing it to keep it organized. I'm going to name my file Tech School FBX. And then click the Save button after choosing the FBX format to be generic FBX. And let it run. If you keep your eye on the activity log on the right hand side in Polyport, you'll see that it automatically tracks and protects that FBX I just exported. So now that the export is complete, we can go ahead and close Revit. And I wanted to show you one other thing. So there are alerts that pop up, but since I'm recording, you're not going to see them. But they alert you that you're entering a protected session of Revit or 3 dco Max or whatever application when you try to export data that should be automatically protected. Clicking on the actual activity log event will allow you to get more detail, showing you that the new file was a, a child asset created from the parent asset and that it's a derivative created in Revit. Also, if we go back to the project asset listing, you'll see that the child asset automatically got permissions assigned to it because the permissions cascaded from its parent asset. So now we're going to launch 3D Studio Max and try to import that FBX. Now that 3D Studio Max is launched, we're going to go ahead and file import and pick the FBX we just exported. So I'm going to browse to the folder in the webinar folder in the protected subfolder and choose my import settings real quick. and then hit OK. And on the right hand side, you'll see some telemetry coming through showing that I'm accessing the file in 3D. If we went into the detail, we would see that it's in 3D Studio Max. So now that it's loaded, I'm going to make some simple changes. In this case, I'm going to delete the parking lot. And I'm going to show you that I can save out a new Max file and that it will automatically be protected because it came from a protected FBX. So we're going to file save as, and of course pick the same protected folder to keep it organized. And we're going to call this no parking dot max. So once we save that out or it finishes thinking, you'll see it pop up on the activity log on the right that we've saved out a max file named no parking. Additionally, while we have this file open, I'm going to do a render of the bottom right panel and render it to a JPEG and show you that that JPEG is also trackable and controllable using Polyport. I'm going to choose the scan line renderer to make it faster and then click save file and create a file name for it. In this case, we'll call it 3DS Render 1. And we'll choose JPEG for the output format. And go ahead and render it. And if you'll notice on the right hand side in the activity log, when it's done rendering, you'll see the JPEG name appear, which means it's automatically being protected. When this render completes, we'll close out at 3DO Max. And I'll show you the alerts that appeared while I was working. 
So up top you see uh, it's telling us a protected session was initiated for 3ds Max. And now for the fun part, I'm going to show you that we have access to this rendered JPEG in Paint 3D. And after it loads up, we're going to remove our permissions and see what happens. We'll do the same thing for a Max file that we created. So the renderer opens just fine. We're going to close it. Then we're going to go ahead and remove my permissions to that file by clicking on the little share icon and removing myself, hitting OK. And now we're going to try the exact same thing and we'll have a different result. We're blocked because we do not have permissions to the file any longer, even though it only exists on our local machine. You'll see a generic error here. And lastly, before questions, I'll just show you the generic error for the max file that I took away permissions for. All right. So I'm just going to stop showing the screen here and we're going to launch the next poll while we quickly transition here. So we'll keep this poll up for again, another 60 seconds or so, and then we'll uh, carry on here pretty quickly to the Q and A. While we wait, if you guys have any questions from that video, feel free to post that in the question and answer section and we can uh, answer that at the end. All right, so I'm going to close the poll here. Chloe, do you um, do you want to do a little bit of Q and A here while I launch the the third poll? Or uh, yes, let's see here. So right. I'm just looking at the questions coming in. Ah, uh, so go ahead. Uh, yeah. Uh, so does Polyport only work with 3D data? Uh, no, Polyport is file agnostic. Uh, we and application agnostic. We do have to. Uh, do some like characterization of the application that's consuming the content. Uh, but if you want Photoshop files protected, whatever type of you know 2D content that you're working with, uh, that can all be facilitated with Polyport. Let's see here. Uh, we've got another question from the audience. When you protect your files and someone put it on a local hard drive, then there's still control to take away the permissions. So somehow there's access to the IP that is saved. I can answer uh, that question. Okay, perfect. So um, I like to tell the story that um, somebody's rushing out on a Friday night. They dump some stuff to a hard drive. They send it off to FedEx, and then they're having their glass of wine at 10 p.m. and they realize they put either send it to the wrong person or put the wrong data on that drive. And the thing about our platform is the data calls home no matter where it is or where it's being launched from. So all you would have to do as the asset owner is uncheck the permissions box. And when that hard drive lands, wherever it lands, that file will no longer work. Uh, it's, vice versa also works. If you turn back on that permission, then the file will work. So the means of transport doesn't matter. If it's on a hard drive, thumb drive, it could even be on a DVD. I don't know if people burn DVDs anymore, but um, it's always under your control. Awesome, thank you, Partha. Great, and I'm gonna toggle the other all here. So we had a question that came in uh, by email yesterday. Um, they wanted to know, you know, if you were using a 3D software like Max or V-Ray or ZBrush, um, you know, does this can the software, if you lose your connection to the internet, how do what what is the what happens then in that scenario? Sure. So um, you should be able to gracefully close or still work. The whole point is, um, in our future release coming up, what we're going to do is facilitate the offline use case 
uh, we, if your internet is spotty, not a big deal, because all we need is a little bit of telemetry to let the permissions work. The rest of the components are on your local machine. Uh, but we will be facilitating the offline use case where somebody might want to get on a plane uh, whenever that becomes relevant again uh, and work for eight hours. But at, at this juncture, once you have access to that file, the processing and the, the components are happening on your local machine. So even if your internet is spotty, you'll still be able to work. Excellent. I'm just reading through the questions here. It says, in a protected uh, PDF or JPEG, will Polyport alert or prevent when someone tries to copy and paste the JPEG? So for PDFs and JPEGs, yes. If, so, if somebody tries to, Chloe, do you know if we have that copy pasting for JPEGs yet? I believe we do, yes. Yeah, so essentially if anything's happening to your file that's not supposed to happen, it's gonna prevent it and it's gonna log it. So you'll see that in your activity log. Okay, just reading through another one here. Um, so they're asking if a, if a file is uh, protected and sent to a client, uh, am I right to assume that they will need to install a Polyport client of some sort? That's correct. Uh, and it's an easy install. It's also an easy invite. Uh, it's as easy to invite somebody as it is on Slack. So they'll get the invite and they click the button, download it. It's just like installing Spotify. Somebody asking here about Unreal Engine support. Chloe, do you want to take that one? Uh, so Unreal Engine is on the slate. Uh, right now we're working through Unity. So uh, it's on the near-term roadmap. We don't have a specific date, but I would expect in the next couple of months. Just reading through here. So when you change work uh, that is protected and you have Polyport, does the, does the other person also need Polyport to open the files? Yeah, we just already addressed that. Answer is yes, as a client. So what if somebody merges content from a protected max file to a regular file? So in that case, if you if you start with a protected file in that session of max and you merge uh, content into an unprotected file, the assumption under the rule set is that since that unprotected file has now has protected content, that it will become protected. Uh, it says here, are the files encrypted when they're protected? Yes, that's the, that's the uh, the crux of how we operate. It's uh, on the fly encryption, streamed encryption. This is here. What access does Polyport have itself have to the files? So we do not have any access to our clients' data at all. It's all encrypted in the when it's stored in the cloud. We don't. Two things. One, we don't store your data at all. Uh, we're just storing telemetry and key information, which we also do not have access to. But it's up to you to distribute and store your data once it's been protected. Okay. A couple more minutes here, a couple seconds, to see if there's any more questions that come in. Yeah, just and just to reiterate, so um, we're not a cloud storage system. Uh, we have had requests in the past to manage people's data, but you guys do a good enough job of that as it is, and we don't want to change the way you guys do things. So here's an interesting question. Uh, what if someone mer if someone merged content themselves into a protected file, what happens with the merged content? So the merged content from the original would land into the protected file, and that protected file re would remain protected. Um, it wouldn't end up protecting the file that you loaded into there, uh, unless you try to save that file out at the same time as you saved the protected content. So at the end of the day, you have protected a protected file. You can bring in whatever you want to. It's not going to affect your um, component files that are going into that protected file, unless you want it to. From all the people that you speak to uh, most often, what, what what's the question you get asked the most often? Hmm. Chloe, do you want to take that one? Ooh. Uh, well, part of just answered it. I wouldn't say there's there's probably three questions. Uh, so the one that Partha just answered is about the storing file. Are we storing your files? Um, and then we'll get the question about, you know, uh, is this a plugin? No, Polyport is not a plugin. Uh, we've architected our system in a way that the protections are afforded at the operating system level which is also what enables us to be transparent to the application that's consuming the content. 
And that's also what gives that flexibility to work with a myriad of the different applications that are involved in a typical creative pipeline. So I would say uh, storing files and then as well as the application plugin question. Gotcha. So there's a question here about uh, price. Ah, perfect. Well, so let me just uh, move this over here. So we are a self-serve offering. Um, we have two different tiers of pricing. So we have a light version and then we've got a team version. Uh, they're based on a per user pricing on a monthly basis. So uh, for the CG Architect community, we are offering a 20% discount off of Polyport. So at Polyport Lite, you're looking at $39 a user per month. And then the team offering, you're looking at $69 a user per month. And when you say user, is that the, uh, say the, the client uh, as well as the person encrypting the file or is it just on the encryption side? So as of right now, it's uh, for both parties, but we have it set up in such a way that, you know, if you have uh, internal team members, of course, you would be responsible for paying for that user. Uh, if it's an external team member, they would get an invite, they would download Polyport, they can do their free trial, and then they would select which uh, option they would want. So you're not responsible for paying for an external party. Are you able to speak at all to the um, image protection side of things and, and Photoshop and kind of where where you guys are at with that? Martha, would you like to answer that one? Yeah, yeah we are um, in the dead heat of uh, figuring out Photoshop right now. Um, Photoshop is an interesting one actually because it likes to read your file hundreds of times just to do the different things it does. It's very inefficient, but uh, we are in the middle of figuring that out in this sprint right now. So uh, we expect that Photoshop would be before Unreal Engine. We are expecting to have Photoshop support uh, hopefully in the next couple of weeks. And then it looks like the audience had also mentioned uh, a lot of you are using InDesign and V-Ray. If there are other tools that you guys are using, please feel free to um, you know, send us a, a little note in the chat window or you know, reach out to us directly so that we can add it to the backlog. question just came in so it's going to use uh, it on a rolling contract basis and what is the minimum period of a contract uh, so we have a month to month offering so you can either do an annual commitment or mo uh, month to month so that's really up to you now we will be getting feedback from the customer base if it makes more sense in the future to have you know a different type of pricing model let's say maybe it is on a on a per project basis but from the feedback that we've received thus far, people seem to want things on a uh, per user pricing basis. Okay. Uh, there's a question here about whether or not there's a free trial or, or some sort of a trial period. Yes, there is a free trial. Uh, we're doing a free 10 day trial right now. Excellent. What I'm going to do here is launch the, the last poll question while we kind of wait for some more questions to roll in. So we'll leave that up for a minute or two while you guys uh, type in any more questions. Definitely seeing a lot of people finding this useful. Holy smokes. It's a good thing. It's awesome. Oh, it's good to spend 30 minutes of someone's time and make it useful. Yeah, <laughs> exactly. So another question that just came in, it says, uh, if they stop the contract for some reason, what happens with the files? Are they still protected and accessible by others on a local drive or, you know, I guess even, you know, um, they, they are still protected. They are still protected and there is the faculty to unprotect files by the owner of the assets. So there's a command line right now that can do that. Uh, we don't want to get you stuck in Polyport by any means. Um, so there's always a way to undo it. If you want to archive, you're done with the project or if you want to discontinue Polyport. And this was a question that I had for you guys early on, but you know, if you have a protected file and somebody attempts to open that file, but they don't have the um, local application installed, what happens? What, do, what does the, the end user see? They will just get a generic error because it's a blob of encrypted data that the computer does not know how to interpret. And that's, that's very useful for when, let's say we have the case where something leaks, right? 
it really doesn't matter if it leaks because it's useless data to whoever receives it. And is that and error then, message, is it um, indicative of that this is a protected file or is it more of a, just a generic error? So unless we are, are present on the computer, we can't help you to interpret what is going on with the data. So it's gonna be a generic error, but if you have Polyport, then you'll get some more robust information. Okay. There's a question here. Does the receiver know the file is protected? So if the user is supposed to be using the file or has Polyport, then they will know. Otherwise, they will just know that it doesn't work. Um, and so in that case, you'll have a user that doesn't have Polyport, which probably shouldn't have your file in the first place. Either that or they haven't been told that they need to install Polyport. Down the line, there is a faculty that we're thinking about introducing, which would have some messaging travel with the file. Uh, so that it will indicate that it's a Polyport protected file, even if you don't have Polyport. But at this juncture, you have to have Polyport to get the more robust information of knowing that the file is protected. Yeah, and Jeff, just in the webinar recording, if people didn't see, there are desktop notifications that Polyport provides. So if you do have Polyport installed and you don't have access, it's gonna say, hey, you don't have access to this file, please contact your administrator to get access. Excellent. So we've gone through all of our poll questions here. So I mean, oh, we've got another one more question that came up. Are there any options or setups where you can prevent files that are protected being used uh, on the web before you give permission to that user? Um, I'm trying to get some clarity on it. So you want to protect the file before you give them permissions, but you want to grant the access on the web or not grant access on the web? Wait for the uh, answer. Does the answer that come back up? Uh, while we wait for uh, Johan to uh, reply, I'm just going to read out another question. So it appears that you're using uh, locking derivative files that could fall under another's copyright. Can you address file locking and potential copyright issues? Yes. So um, this is always a an area that's always developing. Still, I mean, there's some companies that still argue over who owns what, right? Um, and so what we do is give you the flexibility to manage that situation based on how your law is or how the contract is drawn up. Uh, Chloe, do you have anything addition to that? I would just say that there is the ability between two parties to kind of have uh, joint ownership and then you can, you know, at the end of the project decide who has ownership and then, you know, give that over. But when it comes to uh, more so specifically on licensing, content that's still something that we're working on and we are speaking with the different marketplaces to kind of see what would be the best route of resolving those specific issues but that's that as Partha mentioned that's always going to be an ongoing battle the good thing is the technology can facilitate however that resolution becomes so As the, just to um, reiterate this, there will be a recording of this webinar that we'll be posting after the uh, meeting here. So anybody that wants to review or if you weren't able to attend, you'll definitely be able to access that. So another question here, when I want to show images to my clients before they've paid for the services, I'd like to prevent that client from using the images that was meant as a preview uh, for use on the web. Yes, yeah, so one thing I didn't um, show in the demo or go into detail is there's three levels of permissions you can give to people. There's view, there's edit, there's create. And so if you were to provide that image to somebody, you could actually just give it to them, let them have it, send it, send it via email or whatever. And if you give it view only permissions, they will not be able to do anything with that data. They can't copy it out. They can't uh, work on it. It's simply view only, and then you could toggle off their permission and that file won't work anymore when they're done. And just to talk about the other two I mentioned, so edit permissions allows somebody to make edits to your file, but they can only save that data back to the same file. And then create permissions allows that whole derivative thing where you can create new stuff, put it in a different piece of software, keep working on the the der derivative components and all of that stuff will fall under protection and your view. Uh, are there any plans for to support Blender 3D? 
That is absolutely on the backlog. Our intention is to be able to support the 60 plus uh, different 3D applications or content tools that um, individuals use in the pipeline. Uh, if we see that we're getting a bunch of requests for Blender 3D, then we'll prioritize that uh, with respect to where it is on the backlog. Uh, with the going back a little bit to the pricing, there's been a couple questions about this. Um, when the client opens a file, are they required to pay, or is that just a license that you're going to pay on your end, so it's transparent to the the client themselves? So currently, the way that Polyport Studio is what you've seen today is set up is that each individual is responsible for their own license, but we do have the the free trial to facilitate um, you know that window of time. In the future, we We'll be looking at, especially on you know more of the traditional licensing side, to have a version of Polyport that maybe is free for just view only. Uh, that's just something that we have not implemented as of yet. Okay. There's a question here. What happens if the or somebody um, uses save as out of a file? I guess what happens to the file? Yep. Um, so save as is a derivative asset. So let's say we have file one named Chloe. We open it, it's protected. We do some work, we save it as Partha. That Partha file will also be protected and permission set that came from Chloe will cascade to it automatically. And that, if I remember correctly in our previous conversation, that also applies to um, elements of that same file that might be exported out? Yep, once you start with a protected file, Polyport will control and monitor and protect any components that come out from that session of the, the software that you're consuming it in. Excellent. I think we'll maybe wait just a couple more minutes here if there's any questions that come in. Uh, but uh, Chloe, is there anything else that uh, you guys wanted to share? Uh, so yeah, I just wanted to let you guys know we've just gone into launch. Um, we are offering a special offer for the CG Architect webinar attendees. Uh, if you sign up uh, within the next week or so, we're offering a 20% discount off of Polyport. So please feel free to go to the link below and uh, sign up and use a free trial and test out Polyport. And if you do have any questions, of course, we will be sending out, or Jeff will be sending out emails, uh, I believe, tomorrow with the recording as well as the link here. And we're available. Uh, please give us a call, send us an email. Happy to answer any questions or provide you guys with a follow up demo based on your specific workflow requirements. Excellent. And if say, anybody wants to do a one on one demo, you guys are able to facilitate that? Absolutely. All right. Well, I bring think we've bring done... your team. It doesn't matter. We'll, we'll facilitate. Excellent. Okay. Perfect. Um, I've I've sat through a few of these demos, so anybody who uh, wants to get a little bit more in depth, I definitely uh, suggest you do so. It's quite interesting to uh, really get into the nuts and bolts. Okay. So I don't see any more questions. So I think we're going to wrap up today. Uh, as I said earlier, there will be a recording of this webinar posted, and if you have any questions, feel free to reach out to Polyport. They'll be uh, waiting your call. So th again, thank you guys, everybody for joining today and uh, look forward to seeing you on the next webinar. Thank you, Jeff. Thanks.